Hello. In this video, I will demonstrate discretive statistic measurements of central location. Discretive statistic is the discipline of quantitatively describing the main features of collection of data. Discretive statistics are very important because if we simply presented our raw data, it will be hard to visualize what the data was showing, especially if there was a lot of it. So, Descriptive statistics enable us to present the data in a more meaningful way, which allows simpler interpretation of data and decision making. In this video, we will focus on measures of central locations and will explain all the types. Here is the summary of measurements of descriptive statistics, and you can see that it's split to three main groups, central location, variation, and other measurements of location. We're going to focus today in this video on the measurement for center location. So the measure of center location reflects the location of all the actual data points. How actually it's been done? With one data point, clearly the central location is at the point itself. When we adding another point to data point, the central location will fall exactly in the middle between the two points, which will reflect the location of both of them. But when we adding a point, a third point, you can see in this scenario, we added a point to the left hand side. And what happened is that now we have two points on the left hand side and one point on the right hand side. So the central location is being pulled to reflect the majority of the points which are on the left hand side. So the central location will be pulled to the left. How do we reflect that using numerical values? So measurement of central locations split to um, arithmetic means, which is usually commonly stated as the average, median mode, geometric means, and weighted mean. When we're talking about the arithmetic means, the average, um, it really depends on what are the data coming from. Is it a population data or is it a sample data? And you can see we have two different um, equations. The notations are different, but the actual calculation is the same. You sum the overall observations and you divide by the numbers of observations that you have. So for example, if we have cells um, that have been collected, uh, let's say for different cells rep, if you want to calculate the arithmetic mean, we will add all the cells and we'll divide it by the numbers of observations. So in this case, we're getting an average cell. This is based on a sample, so X bar is $5,214.28. The median of the set of observation is the value that falls in the middle when the observations are arranged in order of magnitude. So if you have an odd numbers of observations, the middle num um, observation will be the median. If you have an even numbers of observations, you will need to average the middle two observations. Usually the median is not affected or very slightly affected from extreme values. And if we compare that to the average, the arithmetic mean, um, the arithmetic mean is um, affected by extreme values. So Sometimes when we observe that our data sets have um, outliers, extreme values, we might prefer to use median um, and not using the arithmetic mean. So in this case, I took the sales sample and I sorted it. And if I'll take the middle um, observation, 5,000 will be the median in this example. The mode of a set of observation is the value that occur most frequently. A set of data may have one mode or more, sometimes none. Mode is useful for all data type, uh, but mainly we'll use it for nominal data, when the only thing that we'll be able to do is to calculate frequencies. 
Usually the mode will not be affected by extreme values, which is one of the advantages of using this um, type of measurement. Here is a set of numbers. Quickly scan and can you tell what is the mode? Search for the numbers that repeat more frequently. So in this case, yes, the number is seven. So seven is the mode in this set of data. The next measurement called the geometric mean, and it's used when the variable is a growth of rate, a rate of change. And um, usually you will see it in calculations that related to investments. The calculation has been given by the formula here. So RG is the geometric mean. And instead of adding our observations, and what we do here is we're applying a different technique of multiplying. So you can see that R1, R2, Rn are n observations. Um, in this case, it will be, uh, for example, growth of rate or rate of change that has been given. And then we are averaging um, the values. Let's see an example. The following returns were realized on investment over four years period. And you can see the year and you can see the rate of return. How do we calculate the geometric mean? So what we do is we plug the numbers into the formula and you can see that I added the rate of return to one and then multiplied by the next rate of return added to one and etc. In our case, we have n times is four years. So we have the fourth root calculated and then we subtract one and we end up with 0 0.078. So about 7.8% average over the four years, this is the average rate of return. The next measurement is what we call the weighted mean. It's used when values are grouped by frequency or relative importance. So in this case, you can see that W represents the weight allocated to the value X. So, if a class of 50 students took a test, and let's say 20 students had an average of 80, and the other students had an average of 60, what is the average score of the whole class? So basically what we are learning is that a score of 80, 20 students got that, and a score of 60, 30 students got that. So together we have 50 students. If we will multiply the score by the numbers of students and we'll add up, we'll get 3,400. Divide that by the weight, the total weight of 50, and you'll get 68. The next step is to talk about skewness and central tendency. And the connection to the um, measurements of central location to the shape of the distribution. So in this case, um, you can see that there are um, three scenarios that we can talk about. A bell-shaped histogram, <clears throat> a negative left-skewed histogram, and a positive right-skewed histogram. And what we see in a bell-shaped histogram, when the histogram is symmetric, the mean, median, and mode will be the same. If the histogram will be a right-skewed, positive-skewed histogram, it means the tails go to the right hand side. And what we'll see is that the mean will be higher than the median, which will be higher than the mode. We'll get the opposite relationship when we are dealing with a left skewed negative histogram. So the reason we're getting those relationships is because the mean is most affected by skewing. So when we have a tail with extreme values, it will pull the mean either to the right or to the left depends on the skewness of the distribution. So that's complete um, our video for 